Hey everybody, welcome to Bitcoin Talk. This is Rajarshi and today we have with us Vlad for Vladimir Fomin. And uh, welcome Vladimir to come here. Vladimir is a B-Trust grantee and working on open source Bitcoin Rust-based project, BDK and other stuffs. And he's from Africa and today it's our fortune to have a conversation with Vlad. And thank you Vlad for joining us. Thank you, Raj, for having me. It's yes, a pleasure I, to be here. Yep, and you are quite a prominent face of the African Bitcoin developer, developer community, one of the trailblazers over there. So um, we are very stoked to have you. And let's start directly into it. Like um, basically what we wanted to talk with you about your journey and how you got into Bitcoin development. So can you tell us briefly about your background? Like how was your studies? How was your job life? And how did you found Bitcoin? So I, I went to school to study computer science. So I actually have a bachelor's in computer science. Um, I, well, after school, I came out, um, I worked a little bit at the malaria research lab. I was doing machine learning research there. Mm -hmm. um, mostly uh, training a model to like detect malaria from the right. images that you get from like a microscope. Okay. I did that for a while. Um, after that, I got a job to work as a front-end developer. I worked as a front-end developer for like six months. Uh, then after the six months, the pandemic hit, basically. So when the pandemic hit, I was in the house for, for a while. So I did, um, I did some voluntary work for one of the very prominent developers in the Web3 space. So they were trying to like uh, start a course on in like an introduction to cryptocurrency course. And what I was helping them to do was to set up their website to deliver this course. So that's that's actually I've known, I've known about Bitcoin like for a very long time since the, the days of the Silk Road. But uh, that that is the time that I got the chance to actually look at Bitcoin from like a monetary perspective. Right. Um, yeah. So after that, after that experience, I got a job to go and do a backend Python development in Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Ghana. I did that for like a year, um, almost around the same. After a year, the, the, this thing, the, the Beatles uh, board team was announced. And one thing I have to say is that while I was working in Ghana, I kept on looking into like the Bitcoin space. Like I kept on wondering, but like, how do you get in? Like, how do you get in? Like, what was the right opportunity for me to get into this thing? Right. And so when the Beatles team was announced back then, I was still in Ghana working this Python backend job. And one of the one of the members of the board actually two of them uh, are co-found co-founders of another of an organization called kala which is focused on like training african bitcoin developers right. so when the team was announced you know yeah you look at the people that have been announced in the tweet and you're like uh, let me do some research a little bit around them so while doing that research that's how come i I, I, I jumped into and saw like color. Right. So I looked at it a little bit and the guys were promising to, to like, like, do like training for like six months training. And it wasn't six months, three months training, fully paid. And I was like, is this thing really serious? <laughs> but I really wanted to get into the space. So I applied anyway. I, I applied and I applied and I got in. That's how like I got into like Bitcoin development. Right. But, right. Yeah. And and you, you you got through like through the professional program of Kala and uh, uh, so tell us a little bit about Kala. How how do they how do they work? How do they train people? And what was your experience liked in Kala? Um, so Kala is a very amazing program. One thing I must say. Um, uh, one one thing they did well at the time was they they took developers that were uh, working into like the web two web two space 
And they kind of made it easy for us to transition. By that, I mean um, trying to make sure that at least you have an allowance that can at least cover like your living expenses mm -hmm. before like you, you get like the next thing in the Bitcoin space. I think that was amazing. Now, talking about the program itself, the program itself is really like, um, it has, has been really well thought out. So uh, it starts with a study group or a study group that is focused on mastering Bitcoin that takes, sees that 12 chapters in mastering Bitcoin that, that goes on for six weeks where each week you guys uh, discuss like two chapters of the book. Mm -hmm. That's good because it's a nice introduction into like, um, Right. the whole Bitcoin technology and what it is and how it works and everything. And it's also an avenue to like question some of the design decisions and like to ask questions that, um, to ask questions that will help you to dive a little bit deeper. Right. So after that program, there's, um, there's, a, there's a seminar. The seminar is like five or six weeks. Um, then after the seminar now you have like a three months fellowship now the three months fellowship is program is program almost like a job training kind of program so when you are in the three months fellowship it's almost like uh, you are working with a bitcoin engineering team because at the end of the day you have like a manager that you have to meet every day with and like update them with your progress um and the program is also focused on, okay, with all the programming knowledge that you have, how can you build like a portfolio for yourself so that at the end of the program, you can be viable on the, you can be marketable on the Bitcoin job market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So that was really important. And that kind of like helped all the people who were aspiring at that time to give them through a structured way. So yeah, Kala is one of the biggest inspiration behind Bitshala actually. And uh, oh. the conversations have been around the same line between Chain Code and with Kala that we had is that seems like the amazing way of like structuring um, structured program to aspirants so who are asking this kind of question like okay now i understand but tell me how i know the why but now the how question comes but there are like absolutely other ways of getting into bitcoin development space but as uh, developers often come to acknowledge is like the route to get into bitcoin development even for experienced developer is a bit tricky and it's yeah. not always trivial to understand what you need to do and where you need to be and whom you need to talk to in order to yeah. get um, get your ways around. So it, it's amazing what the friends at Kala are doing. So hopefully we will be able to push some same kind of effort towards Indian developers also. So now coming back to your Bitcoin yeah. journey. So thanks for like explaining us the how part of the Bitcoin development journey. But uh, how about the why part? What got you interested into Bitcoin? Like why Bitcoin? And I want to start with this customary question that I have with every episode. What is Bitcoin? <laughs> Well, uh, Bitcoin, I mean, I like the definition that this one is, is kind of very popular and I, I find it very interesting, which is um, Bitcoin is just a technology that helps you to move value from one person to another without a third party. That's it. That's right. the best way to, to think about it. Right. And it does that digitally instead of like yeah, the physical yeah. medium that we used to do previously with yeah. rock and all. Yeah. So when you first, yeah. uh, you first heard about Bitcoin around 2013, 2014, uh, pretty early. Mm -hmm. And then it took you some time to realize this is actually something interesting, not just hackers money or magic internet money floating around. So when did that switch happen and how did it happen? um it it took a while to be honest um i mean I'm, I'm not one of those people that will tell you that oh um i met bitcoin and i the first day i met it i read the white paper no like i i met bitcoin in 2013 i saw it not that met i saw it i saw how people were using it on the silk road Back then, I was doing an exploration of the dark web. I was more interested in the dark web than Bitcoin itself, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, 
2017, when the bull market was going on, I had a couple of friends that got scammed during that process. Like they mm -hmm. bought Bitcoins from like a trusted party that scammed them. Um, 2018, I actually had, I actually attended a talk, a Bitcoin talk at my school. Mm -hmm. But okay. it still didn't. It still didn't make sense to me. By then, I was focused on like, okay, first I was focused on machine learning, and uh, then secondly, I was like, okay, let me let me just get a job. I this mm. is 2018. I'm just leaving school. Uh, let me just get a job. Mm -hmm. So um, it only spoke to me because I went back home, like I school in Ghana. So I went to back to Cameroon, and while in Cameroon one of the things I was trying to do is like to contribute to move things forward. By that, I mean, like I was trying to start a startup. Um, then I was also trying to like get involved in the whole like uh, society or community in Cameroon back then. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that was so hard in Cameroon is the way like the government has just blocked everything. Like even elections, elections, elections have, are run in a way that nobody can trust the elections. So one thing that was clear from my experience in Cameroon is <laughs> you, it's like you've given too much trust to this government. And, right. I, and I, I needed something, I needed, pardon? Uh, you saw it failing in front of your eyes, how the trust yeah, was failing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And I kind of needed a way, like I kind of needed a way to like protest or to do something without uh, necessarily going to the streets. Because another thing, another thing too in Cameroon is that um, the government is very repressive. Uh, people have taken to the streets to protest um, election results. People have taken to the streets to protest uh, the arrest, the, 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 the incarceration of opposition party leaders and stuff like that. But the government is always violent when you take to the street. Mm. So that's one of the aspects of it. I mean, the other aspect is I had this uh, understanding of Bitcoin from a monetary perspective from the time I was working with the Ethereum developer. So right. I kind of I kind of understood after the pandemic that this Bitcoin thing from a monetary perspective is actually very important. I mean, right. the, the second thing is, I come from a country that uses the franc CFA and activists, activists for years have protests against this currency. But the thing is we live in countries where the leaders of those countries are kind of like the puppets of the French government in some sense. Right. So it's it, it's very hard for you to just it's very hard for them to take decisions that are going to be hundred percent in the good interest of their people. Truly. So yeah. yeah, so so it's it's all those things. I wouldn't say it's like uh, I had like a light bulb moment. It's all those things that kind of mm -hmm. like push me to Bitcoin. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Now that you are like 24 seven full time working on Bitcoin and Bitcoin related stuff, development. So what does work look like in Bitcoin? Um, so I'll say first, uh, so I focus as you are, I also focus on Bitcoin open source. So for me, really work looks like uh, it changes. It, it changes that this is just you maybe like looking at the repository, in this case, mostly BDK, looking at the Bitcoin DevK repository to figure out, okay, what are the issues that are available that I can work on? Um, mm -hmm. There are days it could be like, okay, um, I don't understand this mini script thing very clearly. Let me try to go back and try to understand like uh, the article that maybe SIPA wrote on it. Uh, mm -hmm. There are days it's just like, oh, uh, my raw skill, my raw skills are not so good. Uh, I need to do some rust. So it's a it's a bunch of things. Um, one of the things that it also involves, which uh, from the beginning I didn't get, but I'm getting with time. Which at times is at times it's just you getting on Discord and answering questions that uh, users have about the library and stuff. Yeah. 
Right. Yes. And uh, uh, how, how does it feel as a difference from your past life before Bitcoin, the work life, how it was before Bitcoin and how it is after Bitcoin? Is there a difference or it's mostly the same? Or how, how, do, you, how do you describe the nature of the difference between fiat work and Bitcoin works? Um, I would say that there is a little bit like in the fiat world where I used to work, there was always that pressure of moving fast and getting things out there very quickly. But um, from what I see so far here, there's a focus on let's move with a kind of stable kind of pace in order to make sure that we guarantee the security constraints that we want to guarantee and everything. Yeah. Right. And and that kind of like shows up very much in the open source work culture also. And a side effect of that is like things moves a bit slower in this world. And yeah. you, you, you have a lot of time waiting on certain features getting incorporated in the upstreams of projects. And then certain features takes a lot of discussion and you end up having like community debates and brawls like that, right? So sometimes yeah. features get com com um, um, contradictory and then uh, then you have situations also like where certain certain group of users wants X and certain group of other people wants why and there yeah. is no consensus about what's the right thing and wrong right thing to do so it's it's yeah. all like um, part of that trade off with the security mindset is like yeah. we can, cannot afford to like move fast and break things and yeah. and how about like uh, apart from development what are the scene of uh, bitcoin community and so social engagements and events happening wherever you are how do you see it around you is it too much or like not at all um so in kenya there are a lot of um educational activities going on so you have organizations like bitcoin that are that are educating women to understand bitcoin and try to use it to like um to empower themselves basically um you also have uh machankura is also on the ground so there's a possibility of doing like lightning transaction from a ussd interface so right. then that means that you have people that are not necessarily connected to the internet, but then they can interact with the Bitcoin system. Then right. um, you have uh, organizations like uh, Bitcoin Matani. So what they are essentially doing is taking like content, um, Bitcoin content and uh, translating it to Swahili, which is like the language spoken by everybody in Kenya. Uh, yeah, so those are the main activities when it comes to also uh, payment. There are a couple of places. So I know this store called Nuria, Nuria Bookstore. You can make payments to them in Bitcoin. Uh, there's one restaurant I know, I've forgotten the name. You can also pay to be in Bitcoin. There are a couple of places that are accept Bitcoin. Right. Yeah. right. And how about yeah. the community gatherings and meetups? Does they happen often over there? Yeah, so uh, last year, we actually got like a chance to like bring together at least the community online. Um, starting this year, we are going to be doing like, um, we are going to be doing kind of like, we are going to be meeting most probably on a monthly basis to like just chat and discuss like how every, every person is advancing in their own work. Uh, because one thing, I, one thing I, also, I also forgot to say is that we have a big devs. So there's a bit there that I'm 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 setting up with Simon. Uh, Simon, um, yeah, Simon Jero. Simon is one of uh, one of the developers that got into Bitcoin very early on here in Kenya. He currently doesn't work for. He works on the Lightning. They, they are using Lightning to to do. Um, they have they have this solar power solar power mining system that they use lightning to do payouts with um yeah so i i don't understand the tech a lot uh, yeah but then we have this big dev that we set up last year uh yeah. we've been able to do one physical meetup so one of the ways we are trying to build the communities we also have this mastering with the bit there. We have this mastering Bitcoin study group that we do every week 
on Thursday. So the idea is um, when I came here, what I saw is most of the developers, they, they are not even familiar with the content. And so the idea for me was to like, okay, let's try to grow together as a community. I'm not experienced myself. I'm just trying to get, I'm just getting, I just got into the space. So the idea was let's try to grow together as a community. So I thought like mastering Bitcoin would be like a, a good place to start. Yeah. That's really a nice idea. And like uh, getting together and studying a group together is much more helpful than like trying to do it yeah. by yourself. So yeah, this kind of like spontaneous sparky book reading club is probably the probably the most densest community activities that spawns out everywhere and other people should like take in this idea and like can start their own friends friends club of like book reading like read through mastering bitcoin read through programming bitcoin and uh, and and st share the journey together so uh, coming back to the situation of like the bitcoin scene in africa uh, how do you see that the whole ecosystem got evolved throughout the years how where it was in 2018 2019 where it is right now in 2023 and how do you see it's growing forward um i would say that there's a growing community uh, there are also bitcoin only businesses so an example is bitnob uh, you most probably saw Bitnob doing a transaction with, you most probably saw the announcement of the possibility of doing a transaction from Nigeria to like the US using mm -hmm. Strike and Bitnob. So for remittance, that's really good. Um, what I would also say is that there's a growing community of developers. So um, with Kala now, you have so many people that have like an avenue where they can go and train. Um, people are getting, I would say, Initially, when the, when Bitcoin just um, when people just started hearing about Bitcoin on the continent, there was no avenue where they could get like good content from. But increasingly, there are avenues where you could actually get good content from. So I believe we will see less scams with the years because many Africans have been scammed. Like like my my mom talks to me all the time about Bitcoin. She's like, oh. Um, I heard about this thing, uh, da da da. Like she, she thinks every crypto is Bitcoin, so she refers to all of them as Bitcoin. So I'm like, I, I tell her most of the time, you know, that that thing is not Bitcoin. Bitcoin is something else. Bitcoin so is Bitcoin. many, yeah, yeah. So many, many people are still in that bucket, especially the mm -hmm. elderly people. Yeah. Right. So that brings us to the next question is like, what is the crypto scene looks like? Is it like too hyped up, like people throwing NFTs all over the place or 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 is not that bad? Uh, the crypto scene is booming, to be honest. We, 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 we even have in the bear market. Be... Even in this bear market. Uh, no, in the bear market, I would say everybody is down. Uh, but then there's a there's a, there are a lot of people into Web3, even in Nairobi, where I am, like there are so many people into Web3. Um, one of the things that I usually do is I usually try as, like I try to have conversation with some of them and try to orange peel them. But there, there, are, a lot of, there are a lot of people in Web3. Yeah. Mm, right. Yeah. So the thing is, the thing is for a long while, there was no clear path as to like, what are the opportunities that someone can get in bitcoin but i think that is fast changing because we have people that are able to like do uh, podcasting there are people that are doing writing around bitcoin that are able to earn a living doing that so i think it's, it's changing yeah so yeah it's, it's definitely changing and recently there has been an african bitcoin conference also so yeah yeah. You were also part of that conference. You were a speaker. So how was the experience? How how was like seeing Bitcoin like that in Africa for the first time? Um, it was good to connect with people from all over and hear some of the stories of uh, how activists are using Bitcoin um, and how people in people in Francophone Africa are using Bitcoin. Like there are stories that you hear, you never even know they exist how people in the Congo are using Bitcoin. And I mean, 
that that was that was i would say the highlight of the conference for me then it was also an opportunity to meet some of the faces that you always hear about online but you never get a chance to meet yeah 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 truly and um, what are the major use cases of bitcoin in africa like what are the major value proposition that bitcoin makes in front of the population of africa where they can see the immediate need of of using a system like this um some people are using it for some people are using it for international trade um mm -hmm. there's definitely the there's definitely the crypto trading part of it um some people are using it as a savings account um um some people are using it for remittance nowadays um but one thing i would say is that many more african like Africa is ready to use Bitcoin today. Um, mm -hmm. By that I mean like there are so many challenges that Bitcoin will solve. Let me give you a simple example, right? Last year in Ghana, while I was there, the government was about to put a tax on mobile money. And the citizens fought hard to stop the government from doing this. But the government still pushed ahead and did this. Back then, the citizens were looking for an alternative that they could use. There were alternatives. The only problem, the only problem with the alternatives is that, for example, if, if, if you decided to use Bitcoin at that time, Bitcoin is very volatile. So how are you going to convince people to use it? So I think the people are ready to use the technology. From what me I see as a developer is the technology is not yet ready. Right. Hmm. So but the people, the people are ready to use the technology. To right, it's already the need yeah. is already there, and it's almost like as if we are like as a developer who are lacking behind the all the improvement, all the polishing that people need in order to use this system. So, yeah. uh, in that sense, like uh, the the lightning probably is like probably the best way for people to use for this kind of like mobile payment system like the mobile infrastructure in africa is pretty dense and yeah. uh, the best way to like have this mobile instant payment kind of feeling is lightning not the main chain so do you see yeah. like uh, businesses startups or like projects starting up to like fill up this place or creating like focused lightning uh, african focused lightning applications or people just use mostly the the standard standard wallets that they have um i i've not seen a lot of people using lightning i see a friend of mine using it a lot um mm -hmm. yeah but to be honest i haven't seen a lot of people there's machankura machankura uses lightning that's one of the okay. Yeah, okay. Machankura so is like, is the, is the phone, is the thing that you can send Bitcoin via SMS messages, something like so that. So it, it's, it's not really SMS, uh, it's a USSD. So, okay. um, I mean, it's kind of different from SMS. So okay. it's a way for you to like dial a number. So you can dial a number and suddenly you have like this interface where you have like options. Let's say you dial like star one, two, three hash and you mm -hmm. have this interface where you have options. You can say, okay, send money, um, withdraw money, do this, do that. So you can basically select like the actions you want to do on that menu and right. like let you wanted to do you wanted to send money maybe they would ask you for the information that you need to be able to send that money and stuff like that so, so it's right. it's not really sms uh it's kind of different actually hosted on the web server yeah it's actually hosted on the web server yeah right yeah. makes sense okay and and how how is like the so how do you see the governments, maybe in Ghana, Nigeria, Nairobi in general, how do you see the sense of the government approaching this, uh, this technology? Are they too hostile or are they are opening up slowly to it or they are like mostly quiet? So I'm, I'm going to speak about the Cameroon government. So uh, in Central Africa, um, there's, uh, there's this organization called COBAC, which is like um, a consortium that 
a banking kind of consortium that that uh, basically comes up with the regulation for like for the, the financial regulation for the whole area so when when central african republic came out and they said that they they are going to uh, they are going to um, add bitcoin as legal tender in the country Cobac mm -hmm. came out and said that um, they don't that that is illegal and that is against the laws that uh, the sign the sign when they decided to use the franc cfa and in cameroon which is neighboring a central african republic where i come from the government issued a statement um i think in may saying that uh, financial institutions should not accept any transactions that are related to to bitcoin or crypto in any way okay. yeah but but if you come now to countries like kenya the government is the central bank is hostile against it but the government is figuring out they are like okay we need to figure out how we are going to tax uh, the trading activities so it's it's kind of like uh, funny because the, the central bank is fighting it but then the government cannot fight it because people are already in it that people make a living out of it yeah so mm, right it's the people who are like yeah. making the statement now and saying like okay you can ban it as much as you want but you cannot stop us from using it anyway and uh, and eventually yeah. like is is that your by well, my sense is like the government has to come into some kind of like sensible policy framework about how to allow people and how to allow businesses to emerge into this new kind of like digital system because once it exists you cannot like make it unexist like as a government you can say like okay i i'll not look at it i'll not talk about it i'll be angry at it but that doesn't mean the thing will go away so so do yeah. you see any drive like that any any organization or any group of people coming together or trying to have that policy talk or we are still very early for that um where i am i don't see any group that is trying to push um that is trying to push uh, policy makers but then let me give you a story like i i, I have a couple of stories from senegal so i was also in senegal in December, there was a Dakar Bitcoin Days, which was another mm -hmm. conference. So I got a chance to like meet some economists and some people working at the, the African Union that are looking into Bitcoin. So there are people that are thinking about. Uh, so in the case of the African Union, the person there was thinking, oh, he's going to like maybe we're talking about how we can propose like um, the African Union to use like Bitcoin for like inter in the um, inter inter African trade, so trade between two countries. For example, let's say you want to settle uh, a trade between two African countries, you could use Bitcoin okay. to do that. Right. So there, there 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 was also an economist that was thinking about um, how he can like um, how he can push. Um, how he can talk to the Central African Republic government to make sure that they come back on the Bitcoin track. So all these conversations are happening, but um, on the ground, I don't see like any particular organization that is pushing yeah. for legislations like Bitcoin leg legislations. Yeah. Right. But I'm also a developer, so I might be missing. Yeah. I might be missing oh, on some okay. of these things. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think like that's like the natural progression of it, how it will be like uh, eventually like some people interested in the government also because there are smart people over there also. They're also watching it and they also understand it. Eventually, some of them will start having that conversation and if, like uh, sooner or later, the, the, the scenes going to evolve and then the situation is going to evolve and uh, Africa is put, probably potentially poised the most uh, as a continent to to benefit most from the Bitcoin adoption, because the yeah. Africa as a continent has been exploited by the West and the Middle and the East and in many different ways. And it has a huge pool of talent, is a huge pool of natural resource, and it should be able to like create a much better system around itself. So 
probably hopefully like the african and the government will like realize this that this is like in there for their own benefit and they can come together and do something about it so no. yep and with this we want to are almost at the end of our show and um, so any last words or anything that you want to share to the developers and getting back into the development journey so uh, what would you suggest to to an aspiring developers in africa or anywhere in the world uh, maybe experienced or just getting out of school doing some gigs and getting his hands dirty and wants to get into bitcoin what are the possible path that he can trace um i would say that try to look for a community um Unless you're unless you're Linux Torvalds and you know how to build your own operating system, don't try to do this on your own. Um, yeah. Try to like look for a community of developers that you can join. Be it, it could be Kala, it could be any organization worldwide. You could even do some of Bitcoin, which is like a good way to get into like open source. Um, right. So that's that's the advice I would give. Um, Basically, just wet your just just wet your legs with the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just gets your hand dirty, and then yeah. uh, having having network and communication is probably one of the important part because. Um, most of the time people might face difficulty in that part it's like where is this network where is this community how do i find this community so one of good suggestion could be is like if you are interested in some project which you find in the internet which is open source most of the project does have their discord channel yeah. and yeah. if you just drop into the discord channel there you have like a group of people talking around about that project so yeah. in this yeah. way like navigating through and uh, any any other last word you want to say to our viewers to other aspirants or anything else um so i mean there's this idea that i had um so when i was looking at the when i was looking at the structure because personally i'm very interested in geopolitics so when i was looking at the whole geopolitics structure of the whole world and I've moved around a little bit. So I have friends in a lot of places, even in India. Um, the people of the world really don't have a problem with each other. The problem is the governments and the elites. And Bitcoin, I think, is our opportunity as the people of the world to say, we suddenly have something that we can use to transact with each other. And it's going to be the people of the world. I think it's going to be the people of the world that are going to show that. I don't think, I don't think a Cameroonian has a problem with a normal French citizen, although their government is exploiting our country. But we don't have a problem with the with the French citizen. We have we have a problem with the government and the elites. So Bitcoin is the technology of the people. I think is is going to connect the world. It's going to connect the people of the world together more than anything else. Yeah. Truly, and and that's that's a good vision to keep our mind into. It's it's yeah. a, it's a technology made by the people for the people, and uh, we are going to eventually have some uncomfortable conversation with the government, but that's how it's gonna be. And uh, so as a part of this global citizenship, doesn't matter where you are, Cameroon, Nairobi, India, Goa, Spain, doesn't matter. As long as you are like feeling the same problems and you are feeling the same beats, you can, you can still see like you can very easily connect to the person from that other land, yet you know that other land is exploiting you in certain ways. That's when you can yeah. use this technology to opt out and maybe build the solution together and uh, yeah yep and uh, thanks for being here with us thanks for sharing your journey sharing your thoughts and hopefully we will do it over again and yep thank you sure anytime thank you for having me this was a, sure. an amazing experience thank you this was a pleasure thanks bye bye